Hello, my dear class 12 history students. Today, we will continue with the previous chapter that is colonialism and rural society. In the previous class, we have been taking on how colonialism it affected the lives of the Indian peasants or the Indian farmers. So today, we will be discussing on two very important topics that is the Santal Repellent and the Decant Riot. So these two are also an outcome or an impact of colonialism or the coming of the British rule in India. And these two topics are often asked in your final exam. Please play, pay attentive to it. And as we go into the detail, kindly note down all the important points. So the first topic that we will be discussing today is the Santal Rebellion. So being a history student, it is very important for us to know the historical background of who the Santals were or who the Santals are. So if we are asked to define who are the Santals, these Santals are a tribal people who practice agriculture for their livelihood or for their living. And where did the Santal settled? Please remember that if you look at a map here, you will find that at the foothill, which means here, somewhere here, at the foothill of the Raj Mahal, the Santal they settled there, that is in the region of Bengal. But please also keep in mind that we are talking about undivided Bengal at that time, which means that if you look at the present context, you will find this Raj Mahal hill in the state of Jharkhand in the present context. But according to our text, we are talking about undivided Bengal and therefore the Santal they settled in the region or in the foothill at the foot of the mountain of these Rajmal hills they settled there. So when did this rebellion it started? Or when did this armed rebellion or uprising it started? It started in the year 1855 to 56 Please keep in mind that the year when 1855 to 56 and that is the um, background of who the Santals are or who the Santals were. But before going into the main topic, please, uh, if you look here, you will find that at the foothill, these are hills, at the foothill of the Rajmal hills, you will find that there are two tribal people who settled there. One is the Santals, no doubt, and the other one are the Baharis. They are also a tribal people who settled at the foothill. So please keep in mind that and please also do remember that the Santals are a tribal people who practice agriculture for their livelihood. In the case, in that case, they are like our own tribe, that is the Nagas, who settled on the hill and then they practice agriculture for their livelihood. So when these sandals were settling at the foothill of this Rajmal hill, why did the sandals they came towards the plain area here? Why did the sandals they started marching towards this plain or the sloppy region in the state of Bengal? There are two reasons. The first is that the first reason why the Santal came down towards the slope is that the Zamindars or the landlords of that particular area, they hired the Santals in order to clear the forest and extend cultivation. That is the first reason. The Zamindars or the landlords, they hired them to clear a plot of land in order to do cultivation. The second reason why the Santals, they came down towards the slope or the plain region of Bengal is because the British, they invited them to settle in the jungle Mahal. Jungle is a place, Mahal is a village. So that um, the Sandals would do a permanent agriculture or farming there. One reason why the British, they invited the Santal is because even the Baharis or the Baharias, they were settling there at the foothill, but they felt to convert or they felt to turn these Baharias into a permanent agricultural community. And that is why 
that the British that turned their attention towards the Santals and then they invited the Santals to come towards the plant of Bengal. So these are the two reasons why the Santals who are settling at the foothill, they come towards the slope or the plant area for cultivation. So why did the reason why the British as well as the Zaminders they invited the Santal is because the Santals they are good settlers. They are hardworking uh, cultivators and farmers. That is why they invited the Santals to come towards the plant and do farming or agriculture out there. Why? Because when the Santals they produce enough income or enough resources, it all it will automatically benefited the Zaminders. When the Santals do farming there on the plant, it will increase the treasure of the British as well. That is why the Zaminders and then even the British, they invited them to come down to the slopes for cultivation. So a large portion of this land at the foothill of the Rajmahal hills was given to the Santals and this land was known as Damin Eko, which is very important. Sometimes they used to ask in exam, what is Damin Eko? So Damin Eko is a part of the land or a portion of the land where the Santals were given by the Zaminders as well as the British. And this Damin Eko is a Brucian derivation, which means a skirt of a mountain, which means a mountain will be like this. And then it's a formation of a skirt like this, a shape of a skirt. So all this plot of land was given to the Santals and that portion of land was known as Damint Eco. So by 1832, this uh, portion of land which was given to the Santals by the Zaminders as well as the British was known as Damint Eco. And in 1813, you will find that there were 41 villages in this region. So if you can just imagine, um, the number of villages in that particular region. That means this plot of land known as Tamin Eco is a huge or a vast area or a vast portion, which you can imagine that 41 villages existed in 1813. But in 1833, you will find that the number of villages increased from 41 to 147. There was a huge rise in the number of villages. In 1813, you will find that there were around 3,000 Santal population living in the region known as Damin Eco. But in 1833, again, you will find that the number of Santal population increased from 3,000 to 82,000 people, which means there was a huge increase even in population as well. And that gives us the picture or image that the Santals, they were contented in that particular land. They are already a settled farmer or a cultivator there and they started um, farming commercial crops, dealing with the markets, they started dealing with the Zaminders, and then they started dealing with those moneylenders and the Britishers as well. So if you look at the picture of, the overall picture of the Sandals, you will find that they are very peaceful, they are contented, yet below the ocean, there are so many fishes lying or swimming inside the ocean. So those were the problems for these Santals. In the long run, you will find that the portion of the land known as Damin Eco area, which they have been cultivating for so many years, for so many centuries, were slipping away from their hands. And you will also find that um, the moneylenders, the Zaminders, the Sahukars, they were imposing heavy taxes on the Sandals who were cultivating in their own area. That is one problem. That, that is another a very uh, huge problem for the Sandals to deal with. Since they are cultivating in their own area, yet they have to pay taxes. That is something which is unacceptable for the Sandals. The moneylenders, they were charging a very high rate of interest. The Zaminders who once called them in order to do farming in the plain area, they started asserting control over this area known as Damin Eco, which was given to them. So it was all these points, it was totally unacceptable for the Santals to digest it and therefore they started to revolt against 
uh, those moneylenders, those zombies, and against the British. And so when they failed to pay taxes to the British, we have already discussed it's going again, again in the clock that when they failed to pay taxes to the zamindars, to the moneylenders, to the British, then their land were confiscated or their land were seized by the, those moneylenders, by those zamindars, and by the British East India Company, which means that the Santal or the Santalis were exploited by these moneylenders, by these um, zamindars, and then the British. So, in 1855 and in 1856, the Santalists, the, the Santals, they revolted against the exploitation by those of Zamindars, moneylenders, and British under the leadership of two brothers known as Situ and Ganu. So under the leadership of these two brothers, Situ and Ganu, the Santal, the rose in rebellion or revolt against their exploitation. However, you will find that the Santal rebellion was crushed or was put to end or was defeated by the Kombani. And many of the Santal villages were burned down. Not only many of the villages were being burned down, but then those persons who are involved or who were involved in those rebellion or uprising against those British against the Zaminders, they were chained or they were tied and they were put behind the bars. So the Santal Rebellion failed. However, no doubt the Santal Rebellion failed, yet the positive impact or the merit of this Santal Rebellion was that after the Santal Rebellion or after the revolt, the British, they demarcated or they created a separate Santal state known as Santal Barganas. Barganas here it means a small unit or district. A small unit or district. So no doubt the Santal Rebellion failed, yet after the Santal Rebellion, the British demarcated an area for a separate area for the Santal, which was known as Santal Barganas or a unit or a Santal district. So this is all about Santal Rebellion and I hope I made myself clear enough and with this we will go to the next topic that is the Tekan Riot. So in this uh, topic, first we will discuss what is or what is the region or which part of the region of India is known as Tekan and what is Riot in order to have a clear concept of this whole topic we first need to define what is Tekan and what is this riot. So if you look at a map of India, you will find that this western portion of India, this whole tract, this is known as the Tekan region. Please keep in mind that the western tract of India, landmass of India, on the south of Narmada river, this is known as Tekan or the Tekan region. Riot, it means an uproar or a violent outburst. Please keep in mind that. So they can't up, um, uproar or an outburst. So what is this Deccan riot? Where did the Deccan riot happen? When did the Deccan riot started? Why did the Deccan riot it started? All these are a very important question. And if, if we can answer all these Basic question, the whole topic or the whole concept or the broad overview of this topic will be very easy for us. So let us first define what is the gun riot. The gun riot, it means that the Akrian riot which broke out in the district of Buna and Ahmednagar is known as the gun riot. Please remember that. The Akrian riot, when we say Akrian, it is something related to agriculture. And from the defini definition itself, we are clear that um, the gun riot is something related to farming or agriculture. So the agrarian riot, which broke out in the two districts of Bune and Ahmednagar, that is in the state of Maharashtra, that incident or that uh, outburst is known as the Tekan riot. It started 
On 12 May 1875, please keep in mind the dead in years. And, the, and why did the Deccan riot started? It is because of the two very important uh, reasons, that is poverty and indebtedness. Please keep in mind that. So how did this um, poverty and indebtedness led to Deccan riot? If we look at our present, at the context of our textbook, we will find poverty in two dimensions, in two arrow. One is poverty of money or lack of money. Another is poverty means it implies lack of cultivable land. So when you don't have money and when you don't have cultivable land, you need to survive. And in order to survive, you need money to purchase essential goods for your sustenance. When they ended up, when the Indian farmers ended up in poverty, they go to the money lenders or the sahukars to ask money. The money lenders, they give back, they give money or they borrow money, but with a very high rate of interest. So it led to indebtedness. Please keep in mind that. So poverty and indebtedness of the Indian farmers are the two main reasons which led to the Tekan riot. So what? How did poverty and indebtedness led to the Deccan riot or um, what led to poverty? What led to poverty? That is the first question we need to ask. The Maoris, the first reason is that the Maoris, they carried on a very lucrative or a very high profitable business in India. So if we are to ask who were the Maoris, they are a business class ethnic group um, belonging from Rajasthan. They do a very high profitable uh, business and then by lending or by borrowing money at a very high rate of interest. That is the first point. The next point is that the money lenders that exploited the Indian farmers, popularly known as the sahukars or the money lenders. So when the peasant failed to pay those taxes to the money lenders, to those mawaris, then the land were taken away by those money lenders and then the Maoris, etc. So there, there was one incident which led to the Tekan riot. Uh, in 1874, one house belonging to a village, uh, a villager in Bune, that is in Suba, a village called Suba, a person. Um, in a village residing in Suba, his land, uh, sorry, his house was taken over by the Marwari, by a Marwari. Why? Or the reason was that the um, villager, he failed to pay tax. He failed to pay the debt to uh, the Marwari. And in return, the Marwari took over his house. When the Mar Mar Marwari took over his house, then um, it annoyed it annoyed the villagers and then this provoked the villagers to come together and they declare social and economic boycott towards the Maoris. It provoked, it angered or in, it annoyed the villagers and that's why they declare social and economic boycott or protest against the Maoris. They refused to serve them as a water carrier, a berber, a household servant, a shopkeeper, and then they refused to give service to those rich Marwaris. In order to annoy them further, they even throw carcasses of dogs and animals and even throw rubbish and dirt in the house of those Marwaris. When we say carcasses of dog, it means the dead, dead body of dog throwing in the house of those Marwaris to annoy them. So the first outbreak of the Tekan riot, it happened in a village called Suba on 12 May 18, 1875. Please keep in mind, 1875. So when the rebellion started or when the uprising started, they surrounded the house of those um, Marwaris and then they burned all those Bahikadas, that is a gun book, and then the tap bond. The reason why they burned down, they demanded and burned down all these Bahikadas and tap bond was that once this account book, the register which the Maoris were maintaining, were burned or were burnt off, the villagers will no longer need to pay any taxes or any debt to the 
to the Maoris. So that was the main objectives of this Degan riot. It soon spread to another village and to other village and um, at large to a district, to other districts as well. However, the movement was suppressed by the police or the movement was put down by the police. So when the Degan um, riot, it came to an end, the British government appointed a Tekan riot commission or a Tekan riot body in order to find out or in order to inquire why did the Tekan riot broke out. So the body of this Tekan riot commission, after going through a detailed study and after inquiring everything, they come out with a conclusion that poverty and indebtedness of the peasants was the main reason or were the main reason for the causes of the gun riot. So these are the topics for today. The Santal Rebellion as well as the Tekan riot, a very important topic, often used to ask in exam. And I encourage all the students to kindly go through your textbooks so that you will be well acquainted when you come for the next theater. Thank you so much.